That's right. Believe it or not, someone threw this puppy away. This is an LG 43 inch TV. Uh, literally found it in an actual dumpster while I was throwing other stuff away. I saw it, I figured, oh, it's probably got a crack in it, so someone threw it away. You know, accidents happen. Uh, but curiosity set in and I said, I wonder where the crack is, if there even, even is one. So I took a flashlight, this one exactly, and um, I went uh, back to the dumpster after I grabbed it from home and I did this. And if you kind of shine your light all across the display, you can notice if there are any specific cracks all the way along and sure enough there wasn't any cracks at all so I thought what a win let's see if it actually works so the next thing that I did is I plugged it in so let me plug this in which is what we expect so it's probably turning on maybe it's got the name on it oh there we go not sure how visible that was um, oh there we go perfect so now you can see there's lock audio channel input, USB, and time. And uh, because I'm seeing all this, there's no crack. You can see that backlight. Ah, there's a picture. You can see that backlight trying to turn on. It's not able to turn on. And that's the function of some of these, unfortunately. They just happen to go off. So what I'm going to do is uh, replace the backlight. Now, I did something. Um, a little smart and a little silly. I'll give myself, uh, well, I'll give myself 95% credit. <laughs> I'll give it 100 if it works. So what I did was, rather than um, diagnose this thing from the beginning, figure out whether it's the control module, the power module, the, uh, the driver, um, I said, why don't I just see what's going on online? What's the common issues? And it turns out that the common issues, most likely with an issue like this, where it's not cracked, and the backlight, you may see it go on real quick if you saw that flitter, if the camera picked it up. And uh, so what I did was, I ordered LEDs, specific LEDs for this model. And uh, that's what this video is about. I'm going to take this thing apart, replace the LEDs. There should be five strips, I believe, all along this. And uh, put it back together and let's hope it works. It's um, going to be a bit of a job. It's not technically difficult, uh, it's just it's quite time consuming and you have to be careful not to crack anything while you're doing this. So if you're at home and you're a little bit handy, you can certainly do this. Just be very careful of the table that when you set this down, uh, there's nothing sharp so you don't scratch the display. And with a bit of luck, if that's the issue, you will be mighty happy uh, rather than having to go out and buy another TV. So let me just walk around with this, so you have a good visual on um, all the parts here. So we have the speaker, and we have the other one. We have the LED, plus I would assume the infrared uh, trans uh, well receiver is here. Um, LED receiver, I'm not sh this doesn't have Wi-Fi, I don't believe, it's not a smart TV. So um, we don't see that. So if we navigate to the right over here, so we've got the main processor there, uh, standard uh, input HDMI, and um, RGB, yellow, and all the other fun parts for the video. And then we have our standard uh, coax for antenna. On the right hand side, we have a secondary HDMI and a USB. So if you want to watch your pictures or, or do updates on this, that would work as well. Um, and really that's it. It's not a very complex TV. I'm not quite sure how to take this apart because I don't know what needs to actually be taken off. Um, I know that we need to get to the back of this and we need to take the LCD off. So I'll start with this here and then we'll kind of inch forward and just diagnose. Um,
This is the challenge of doing your own YouTube recording. You constantly have to move things if you really want a good shot. So, it's a commitment. It's not easy. Otherwise, we'd have half of this done already. So, uh, in terms of this, all I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this flap up gently, just like that. And then I'm going to just gently take these guys out of there. So we got that one out of there, and take the second ribbon cable out of there. Now both of these have been removed, so we're set. And then I'm going to now remove this as well, since it's just floating there. Grab by the sides of these tabs, and just do a little uh, yaw pitch and roll to get it out. So this is one thing that sometimes in TVs goes out. The thing is though, um, in the three or four that I've taken apart and thought it was the issue, it's never been the issue. That's why I said, you know what, I'm not going to order one of these. I'm just going to order the LEDs because it's very rarely this guy right here. I'm going to set them aside. Because there are a couple of things to keep aware as you're doing this, to be very careful. Okay, uh, number one, uh, this is glass. It's panes of glass, two or three. Treat this as it is, fragile and glass. Number two, this right here is a digital ribbon cable. What I mean by that is there's digital signals coming in through this controller board into this display. If you scratch this and cut it, if you poke it, if you see a little bit peeled off, like let's say you see part of this peeled off, you're done, throw it away. It is no longer uh, going to work. That looks like it's polarized. Not sure. You probably don't want to necessarily touch this, although I don't think you would necessarily you would see this unless you like put black on it or something like that. But that is what we're after. See that? Got those cute little nibs there to assure, just like your pizza, it uh, nothing uh, pushes down on it. All right. So uh, before I can take that back part off that's protecting the LEDs, I need to take those uh, white pins off. And as you see, I'm gonna have to remove the power supply because those clips, the back of those. Uh, we're right behind that, so I went ahead and removed all four. The... Light emitted diodes. So let's take a look at these puppies before we take them out and replace them. They are quite interesting. There's a huge row, so we've got five, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So 50 uh, LEDs. I'm assuming there's one LED per. Uh, Let's see, that's a diode. Let me see if I can give you a nice close picture of what that looks like. Alright, so we're looking at the LED here, a nice close-up shot. Just wanted you to see what this kind of looks like. Now, um, these are sticky on the back side, so it takes a little while to pry these off. I'm not just ripping them off because I'm thinking that, you know, only one or maybe two are bad so who knows maybe for another project I can use these are great LEDs if you want to use them underneath a the counter or something so go ahead and keep those if you can it's been opened I didn't do that all right one two three four five six seven eight nine ten all right Gentle as we can with these. <laughs> okay. So they look almost the same. They don't have those black dots, so I'm not quite sure. Um, I mean, I don't know if these are truly generic or not. We'll see. But let's go ahead and for these, we'll peel it off. Nice 
nice and sticky. And push that in there. Align it. And then boom. All right. We're like 10% complete. All right. So this one's another. I thought that looked different. Yeah, R and then L. Okay. So I'll just be careful. There's L and then R. I thought that looked different. Wasn't sure why, but that makes more sense. Align it nice. All right. So let's do another R. And here is that I'm putting down the uh, LED strips. Now, what I did notice, and you'll see me having to rearrange them, is when I put them down, they said R1 and L1, R2 and L2. So they go in pairs. So if you look real carefully to the very right on my right hand, or now on my left hand side, you'll see that some of them are longer than um, other ones were, which is why you saw that I had to kind of replace some of those. So not a big deal, but just make sure that you're aware or cognizant that uh, the LEDs may have specific alignment. So here I put the diffuser back on and carefully put the LCD back on. Again, being very careful with that, uh, that ribbon that has those um, chips on that. Make sure that you put it gently and they snap in place real good. And then what I'm doing now is putting on that metal frame, which of course after that we can put the plastic uh, uh, shell and then we can put the uh, bezel on top, which is what I'm doing right now. So one of the most important things, again, is be very careful of that ribbon. And, you know, you saw at the beginning of the video, I had the towel and I used my hands, wiped all the way back and forth, made sure there was no rocks, um, you know, nothing minute that could possibly scratch the display. So when I push it down as it is now, I'm confident there's nothing um, uh, that's going to scratch that display. So you saw I quickly plugged it in just to make sure it worked before I screwed all these screws in. As you can see, there's a ton. Okay, so the okay, so there you can see me that I'm uh, just putting the last plate on uh, the backing and the stand, and voila, we have full uh, TV. It looks absolutely great. I played some movies uh, just to see what it looked like, and it's superb. It's 1080p. So I was fortunate that this isn't, uh, you know, 720 or whatever, but that would have been fine as well. I wanted to show some ch clips here and here, but I figured, now nah, YouTube's going to probably censor it. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave your comment below. Have a great one.